Okay, we should be live now. Today we have a very special guest, tremendous drummer and composer and band leader and friend of mine for a while now. We've got a chance to play a bit around the area and uh, have the respect for him as a musician and a human being. This is the great Devon Lewis. Devon, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. Right on, right on. Well, um, so for uh, many people know you already and know your music and have seen you play, but um, I know a lot of people haven't. So. Can you maybe talk a little bit about, um, I, I put a post at the beginning of this about a little bit of your you know, bio and whatnot, a small little bit, but um, can you maybe talk about how you got started playing music? Well, um, yes. I, uh, since I was like little, I don't know, maybe two or so, you know, I started kind of, I guess, beating them pots and pans, you know, and uh and you know uh while my mom would cook you know so i'll go in the kitchen grab some of her her pots and pans i don't even know how i would formulated it you know it just i just remember that you know and uh and i don't even think i seen a drum set but i would make it like a little makeshift drum set and and uh i just kept doing that probably till i was about s seven or so then I, uh, about eight years old, I got my first drum set, and, um, from a, uh, a friend of mine who was selling his drums in his, uh, at a yard sale, and, um, and then I just kept going from there, you know, joining middle school bands and high school bands, and, but even before that, music was like, you know, ran, it was, it was in my family, you know, my grandfather, my my grandfather and even his father, my great grandfather, um, uh, both named Dave Lewis, uh, they played uh, guitar and organ respectively, and uh, even my grandmother, she was a uh, a top uh, pianist in the churches, I believe back in the forties, you know, forties and fifties, and then uh, and then my grandfather. He started playing. She was teaching my grandfather while he was young, coming up, piano, and and then later on he switched over to organ. So and then my dad, he started playing drums at his my grand his mom's church. So he grew up as a drummer. Uh, he's no longer a drummer now, but he sings a little bit and and uh, so music's just been all around. And my uncle, my great uncle, um, he was a uh, a partner in the uh, Paramount Theater, so he brought a lot of musical acts in the 80s, 70s, 80s to uh, the Paramount Theater, so music's just been all around, you might have known, um, he used to manage a, um, a reggae group called Third World, so it's just, you know, and I didn't really know that until later, I went to my grandfather's funeral in 98, and I was reading you know, I'm like, what? He did all this? You know, nobody in my family really told me, you know, like, how special he was, you know, in the city. But, and then I started digging a little bit. And, and then I kind of started telling, like, teachers, you know, like, hey, you know, my grandfather. They're like, how'd you start playing? <laughs> Same question. And I'll be like, oh, my grandfather, he played. His name was Dave Lewis. Like, Your grandfather, he used to come to my high school or whatever. And, yeah, so it just starts spiraling and i just was like wow you know i'm gonna keep going <laughs> well uh, you said you said you started uh seven seven playing you, pots and pans yeah. or earlier than that? earlier than that okay yeah. well so did your folks listen to a lot of music in the house or yeah, my mom did yeah so she'll be cooking or cleaning the house playing everything from a lot of like um a lot of soul and and r&b and uh, she's she liked um a lot of smooth jazz you know uh so i'll hear all these 
she's great. You know, um, I remember she she loved Anita Baker. She loved Sade, then some Commodores and Earth, Wind and Fire and Prince. And I mean, we she had it all, all the records, you know. And I would just while the music is playing and she's cleaning. I remember I was little. I just stare at those album covers, you know, those album covers were like the thing. I just study them for some reason. <laughs> I'd be like their clothes and their outfits and I was like dang they're playing this music so I was like so maybe they had a little thing oh maybe I wanted to be a part of that some some way you know and, it's uh, kind of funny that you say that because now a lot of recordings there there are no even with CDs like I was yeah. telling someone um, before that I learned a lot of what I know about like jazz history about reading the liner notes in right. the jackets you know yeah. and even on on records you know you'd have that information on the back and you have the artwork on the front yeah. and there's you know, now nowadays there isn't that there oh, might be something man. on like the web page or something right, but a lot of people are too lazy to go read yeah. that stuff you know man I used to love those spreads you know just reading you know and then I see who played on what you know had all the he played guitar then and it was awesome to see, oh, he played, he sang and did the drums or something, you know, like certain albums. So. Well, not only you, you get to know the sound of whoever, like, the main person is on the album or the band leader, but you mm. get to know the sound of the rhythm sections and yep. how they kind of fit together yep. and that person's sound and that person's oh, sound. Man, yeah, that was the best. Yeah. I think that's too, I mean, I li you know, I listen to a lot of music still, but it just... That was like a love that I used to, you know, I used to lo love looking at the pictures and reading all that stuff, you know. Now it's just go go to my page and download it. Yeah. Like, oh, good. <laughs> well, so, okay. Um, who were, when you first, I mean, you, when you first started getting aware of music and just having fun playing, who were some of your, um, did you have any favorites that you like, really like, oh, this, I really like this? Um, you know, starting out, I didn't really, you, when I was young, um, like before, before middle school, I would say, you know, I would listen to funk and soul, you know, and all that. So I always liked, um, like, Earth, Wind, and Fire and Stevie Wonder's music, you know. It was just kind of funky, upbeat, you know. But then as I got into middle school, joined the jazz band, you know, you learn about all these jazz greats, you know, because you don't really, for me, I didn't learn too much about the drummers and the soul and R&B but with the jazz, it was just there. Art Blake, Elvin Jones, Buddy Rich, Max Roach, you know, you name them. So I was like, oh, man, you know. And it, it's for some reason, it was more accessible to me, you know, to just go um, kind of lean towards a favorite, you know. So Elvin Jones, he was my guy. <laughs> you know, something, something about it, I was just like, oh, man. I think I heard that Cold Train. Yeah, that's a good guy to have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just like, man, something about it. You could tell that he, oh, the, Elvin, he just had that sound, you know. just It was a sound for me. There was much more, like Buddy Rich, he was more flashy and fast, but it didn't do it, you know, too much for me. You know, I just, I love the, that, that passion and that, it felt deep to me with Elvin, you know. Not anything anybody else wasn't deep, but it just it hit me in a way that I I was like, oh, I wanna I wanna be like Elvin Jones. <laughs> yeah, you and a lot of other people. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I'm curious when you were really young still and and displaying an interest in music and having fun with it, did any of your relatives take notice and try and like help, or they just let you just play and have fun with it, or did you, did your grandfather ever, you know? give you any advice or man, talk to you about stuff or? it's so weird because man nobody really you know the only person i would say was my dad you know like he, he i didn't grow up with him you know he wasn't in my same in the same household but he was the one that was just like you know we we come from a background of musicians and you know and so he I think he just said keep going or something you know and then i got to spend time with my grandfather before he died um when i was in elementary school and um but he didn't even talk about music but the one thing i you know and it's, it's weird he i think at that time he was just kind of retired by that time but i didn't really know the impact he he had but i remember he would just walk around the house like whistle the whistling was 
I mean, I never heard nobody whistle like that to this day. It was just melodies and I was like, dang, it's like a singer, you know. That's one thing I do remember. And uh, so we just chill and hang out, you know, but nobody really ever, you know, and I don't think I pushed it either. I don't think I ever was like, oh, I'm a drummer, you know, I want to play drums. I was just like, for me, I think I was just, I want to learn more. And I just, I probably felt like I wasn't ready to tell anybody myself, you know. But it was more of a fun thing. Like, I'm sure I know. You know, you've done some teaching and, and work with groups and things, and, and uh, I've spent a lot of time teaching. A lot of musicians have. And you can kind of see students that are doing it for fun because they're having fun, and then others that are parents are like, you need to do this, you need to be here, yeah. and then the resentment kind of sets in, and that kind of kills it for some people, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, But for, from what I'm hearing you say, it sounds like more like it was always a fun thing. It was never it a was, forced thing. Right, yeah. Well, it started out just fun, you know, and just like, man, this is, yeah, this is fun, you know. But I didn't. And I don't, I don't even think at that time that I was like, I want to do this. You know, it's just like, oh, yeah, I play drums, but that's like me. I play basketball, too. You know, I don't need to go tell nobody. <laughs> so I don't think, you know, anybody really even pushed it too much. There was, when I was little, or maybe about, I used to go to church with my grandmother every Sunday when I go stay the night with her, all my cousins. And um, for some I like, they all used to say, you like the guitar. I think I used to confuse the guitar with the drums. In my, in my, you know, for some reason, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think because it was loud. I was like, I don't know where that, but I, I used to always watch the drummer. But I would always tell my grandmother, I want to play guitar for some reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was a confused dude. So <laughs> Easier to carry, that's for sure. Unless you got to do the amp. But. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, okay, in middle school, where'd you go to middle school? I went, my first middle school was, um, I went to uh, Meany Middle School. Uh, Wadey Irvin, great bass player. Um, he he kind of introduced me. I asked him, I, I was sixth grade. I said, can I join the jazz band, you know? He's like, well, can you can you play a funk? Can you play funk? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think, yeah, I can do that, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, and so that's what I appreciate about Wade. He's always about the funk and, and uh, staying on the one. And uh, that was a fun school. But then, then I transferred my seventh and eighth grade year to Hamilton Middle School. And that was directed by uh, Bud Jackson. And that's where I met... Uh, the great uh, Adam Kessler drums. So we, from middle seventh to senior year, me and Adam kind of been together, just drumming and put in jazz bands together. So it was, that's when it kind of just starts sprouting, you know, learning all types of stuff, you know. We were going to check out drummers at a jazz alley and musicians like every week, you know. I don't even... I don't even know what I used to tell my mom. You know, she, <laughs> but I was going to jail, you know, I was going to listen to music. I wasn't like <laughs> partying too much. I don't think. <laughs> well, so a lot of times, you know, you get into like middle school programs and they start talking about uh, private instructors and things like that. Did anyone ever get you hooked up with anybody as a teacher for information or? Not really. There was always guys that came in. I'm, I remember, but it, not really at Hamilton Middle School, but um, when I just started high school at Roosevelt, Mr. Br- Scott Brown, he would um, have um, a lot of artists come in. And one in particular was um, John Wecon. And he, he kind of, he's he was probably my, one of my first teachers, you know. Actually, before that, I worked at a bakery. This is it's kind of weird. I, I'm remembering all this stuff. When you talk about it, you know, it's like, wow. Okay. Um, I worked at this bakery in middle school, and the dishwasher at the bakery knew Milo Peterson. Oh, yeah. And so he's like, hey, do you, do you, do you um, have a drum teacher or anybody? I was like, no, I'm just playing. He's like, well, check it. I'll give you my friend Milo's n- number. He plays drums a little bit. And Milo has a great love for Elvin Jones as well. <laughs> so, he, yeah, because I was talking with Scott, who's a saxophone player. Uh, he was like, who are some of your favorite players? I was like, oh, uh, Elvin Jones. You know, he's like, oh, man, you got to call my friend Milo. 
hooked me up with Milo. Milo got it. Snares all signed by Elvin. I'm like, what? You know Elvin? He's like, man, yeah. Because Elvin, his favorite bakery was Honey Bear Bakery, where I worked. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. So I was like, oh, man, this is a place to be. <laughs> so first it was, I went to Milo a few times. So, yeah, we all go to, go to him a little bit. And um, and then middle school, or then I got to high school, uh, John Weekon. For a few, la- you know, he was probably he had like a probably month worth of, of some good time in that we did, you know, just working on time and brush stuff, and and then that was about, I used, I went I think I asked uh, Acox one time, but he was like, man, I'm too busy, man. Well, gotta- so so people people that don't know who you're talking, you're talking about Clarence Acox. Clarence he's a great drummer right. with with Garfield High School. So yeah, yeah, um, but he was too busy. He, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. I was just asking whoever because I seen him playing with Floyd Standifer, I think. Uh, was that at the New Orleans? Yeah, or? at oh. New Orleans Cafe. So, but yeah. So really, everybody's just like, just keep playing, you know. And so that's what I did. I just said, all right. They said, keep listening, keep playing, you know. And that's I just said, okay, keep listening. So I just everything I can get my hands on, I just try to listen. You know. Well, so you came up. Uh, I'm 42 years old. How old are you? I'm 37. 37. Yeah. Okay, so you came up after me, um, and you and Adam were at uh, Roosevelt yeah. at the same yeah. time. So, um, who else was around, like either in Garfield or Roosevelt, coming up at that time with oh, you guys? Man, awesome drummers. Um, now, before I got to Roosevelt, there was a great drummer who I he was like the guy, <laughs> Jay Lepley. Yeah, so. I was like, oh man, I want to be like Jay. You know, I got to join Roosevelt. No, I didn't. I wanted to go to Garfield, but I was like, oh Jay, he got Roosevelt. You know, Garfield had, um, oh man, Chris Patan. Um, there was another dude, uh, Jamal. I forgot his last name. Um, Phil Parasol, Casa Overall, Roy Shorter, Aaron Walker Loud. So. Garfield had a bunch. I was just like, man, I ain't going to get in Garfield's <laughs> jazz band, you know. So Adam was like, he's going to Roosevelt. I, you know, I ended up at Roosevelt. You know, we were both like after Jay. So it kind of just worked out, you know. And that was kind of the best times of my life being in the band. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, um, aside from drummers, like horn players, bass players, piano players, anybody else around at the same time, they're like, yeah, these guys are still playing. And I, I know there are. I'm just curious who was like your your sphere of influence. Uh, that, that went to my school, yeah. that's still playing. Oh, um, from Roosevelt? Oh, or uh, yeah, there's, man, so many. Man, there's a lot of guys moved to New York. There was uh, O.R. Runga, who... Oh, okay. Who was with uh, Macklemore and you know uh, uh, Nick Roseboro, um, Carter Yasutaki, and actually Carter Yasutaki, his uncle, Uncle Mike, we called him. He would round up younger musicians in middle school, and we would do some of our first gigs. So kind of like an Art Blakey affair, yeah, get the younger guys, show them yeah, how to play, and. Yeah, yeah, so we was doing gigs at little community centers and stuff. So shout out to Uncle Mike. And, uh, man, everybody's still playing, I think. I think Carmen Stoff, she was a little older than me. Um, Then uh, who else was? There's uh, from Roosevelt, Jamani Smith, who's with Michael Buble. Wasn't he with Harry Connick Jr. too he, for a little bit? Or? I seen him on Casey. Channel 9 with everybody. I was like, oh, man, Jamani, you play with that person? Yeah. Uh, I remember, in fact, well, did Jamani go to Roosevelt or Garfield? Yeah, he went to Roosevelt. I remember, this had to be like 1997, 1998. Uh, I was going to Olympic College in Bremerton at the time, and we did an Arts at Sea Festival, and Roosevelt was on that at the same time. So we had the co- there were some college bands and some other you know, high school bands from around. And I remember hearing Jumani play back then, and I was like, holy yeah, crap, this guy is monster. tremendous. <laughs> I know. So you, did you play in the band at the same time as him? Yeah, we, we were, uh, we were one, one year together. No, I was in vocal jazz my freshman year. He was in a senior, yeah. So, But we would always play. Yeah, we would all meet him, uh, Chris Johansson, um, and uh, who was on bass? I, f- I forget. The- Andrew. 
Andrew, um, some Andrew oh, my, Smith. Oh. Andrew Smith, yeah. And then there, there was Keith Udelman at Garfield. It was we was around by a lot of different cats, you know. It was, it was we had we had some good years, you know. <laughs> yeah. We had well, some okay. Years. So after I was at Olympic College, I went to Cornish, and yeah. I remember being at Cornish, and I had you know several wonderful professors there, one of which was Hadley Callaman, yeah. and I would remember talking to him about. Um, you know, just not in lessons, but just outside, just talking, right? We'd be talking about music and gigs. Mm-hmm. And I remember him talking about you oh. and playing with you and how much he liked just you, not just like the the rudiments and, and the skill and all that, but just the feel and the way that you played music and listened. And he, he would always talk about how much he enjoyed having you in his band and working. So when did you start playing with Hadley? Man, yeah. I, uh, and how did you meet Hadley? How did that come about? I first met Hadley, my, my, uh, junior year, oh, which was oh, oh one, Reggie Goins, his vocalist, he was doing the first Sundays at Tulas. He'll have a gig every Sunday, every first Sunday at Tulas, and Hadley was playing with him. Me, or Reggie Hadley, Darius Wilridge, Phil Sparks. There's a video on YouTube of you guys playing, and I think Re- Reggie's singing like Parker's Mood or yeah, something like right, that, just yeah, killing it, yeah, killing I know, it. Yeah, like I was, you know, and I I heard of Reggie, you know, and uh, and I didn't really, I didn't hear about Hadley. I knew Darius because I would do, um, I played in a hip hop group with him, um, Jambalaya, at uh, the Baltic Room, and then we started playing with Source of Labor, um. Who who uh, Jonathan Moore had you know there's a Jonathan Moore day actually but uh, yeah so I start so Darius I think told Reggie to call me and then Reggie called me to do the gig at Tulas he's like oh it's with Phil and everybody know Phil Sparks you know I was like oh yeah I want to play and I actually lived a block away from Phil to find out eventually but and then I got to the gig Hadley's there. And man, I was like, "Oh man, who's this?" You know, uh, I'm playing with some, uh, you know, he's older. I'm like, I'm like a, still in high school, so I was just nervous. I, you know, I was like, "Man, I don't, I don't know if I could do this." Well, but. and Hadley's known for being tough on drummers. Yeah. Like he'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, no, that, I, 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 he's always talking about. It. Yeah, he's just like, man, he, he didn't say a lot of words, but he. he kinda, <laughs> You know, you gotta, but you knew what he meant. He was like, yeah. But he was like, yeah, you got that. You know, that's what I need. You know, <laughs> I said, oh, okay, cool. But yeah, and then I started playing with him. I think another gig I did with him. We did a bunch of gigs, and then I remember a big one. He was, it was his retiring from Cornish. Yeah, it was maybe a year later or so with me, him. Don Clement, because she was teaching there too, and uh, maybe Phil, I think, on bass. But then after the retirement, then he started being real. We started playing a lot more. But yeah, man, he man, he had the best stories, you know. <laughs> yeah, that was, but that's I just I learned a lot from him, you know. I just soaked up everything he said because I would ask him, you know, just like about the him playing. Um, you know, in that time, it was like he was right there in the thick of it, you know. So, you know, I was trying to learn everything I could, you know. And he he would tell me, though, he was just like, man, you, you sound good. You got it. Just keep playing. So, and, and, and at that time, I was still was like, you know, I never really had lessons. Everybody just keeps saying, keep playing. Is that what you do? You know, so I, I didn't know, but. That's all I've been doing, you know. So, a lot of it's just self-taught for me. But really, I I, t- I tried to take the time out to go talk to the people, you know, elderly, you know, and the guys who came before me, learn and take their advice and listen, 
I think that's key, you know. Well, that's guys. I mean, you know, I had uh, Jacques Willow was, was on here, and, mm-hmm. and who else? We've had Julian Priester on here. All these guys that have connections to Hadley and um, Darius, you know. Yep. And they're saying, you know, uh, Hadley, you know, from working with all these guys, being in Freddie Hubbard's band, being with uh, Santana, being with, you know, uh, doing gigs with like Joe Henderson and playing with them, you know, he had all this real world experience of things like this is this is what you do, this is what it's like playing with these guys, and he was never like name dropping. He was just like this is the experience and this is how you make this better, yep. you know. And he didn't he didn't uh, he didn't hold any punches. Not to be mean, he mm-hmm. was just trying to help you. This is right. how you get better. This is what yeah. this is what is expected, you know. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. That. Yeah. I think that's probably playing with Hadley's kind of. You know, just and him, you know, and, and actually, you you said Julian Priester. It was me, Hadley, Julian Priester, Phil Sparks, and a piano player they had, um, they knew from uh, LA or something. We did a little week long tour in Montana. And that was some of the best times, you know, because those guys, they just sat up telling stories and. And the music was just like, I'm, you know, and I didn't really, I didn't play with Julian a lot. I played with him a few times with Halley. Then I started looking up Julian. He played with Philly Joe. And I was like, oh, man, you know, I, I think I said, am I supposed to be here? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> but they was like, yeah, man, you do your thing, you know. So, but, yeah, I don't know. I just, you know, I like, I miss, I miss playing with those. And Floyd, Floyd Standifer. Played with him a few times, and he uh, he knew my grandfather, and he would tell me stories. And I think he was a little older than my grandfather, but um, yeah, it's just Buddy Catlett. Man, I forgot about Bud. Oh, man, not forgot, but man, it's just coming back. I played I played every week at Seattle Center, the Space Needle, with Larry Fuller and Buddy Catlett. And man, those are some good times too. I think Hadley came and sat in a few. You know, it was like a dinner thing, but we was just they knew it was like we ain't talking to we we could you know like the the um the management they couldn't you know they were they couldn't tell them nothing you know like you guys do your thing you know we would get the best seats in the house steaks and shrimps all that you know because they they knew that you know Buddy Hadley. You know, they just had their respect, you know, they come in clean. That's what Hadley actually said, man, wear a suit, you know, I would come in with my FUBU and, <laughs> I, I, you know, that's how, you know, I was like, oh, man, I thought I was geared up and stuff. <laughs> it was like, no, <laughs> get you a tie, a coat. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, so just a lot of stuff. And that, too. I got that too from uh, Mr. Brown at high in high school because we were wear tuxes. So he's like, "You gotta look, you guys look clean, you know. Don't be looking all raggedy." And <laughs> so just a lot of stuff, you know, that everybody taught me. You know, I'm still trying to live or take that in. You know. Well, it's funny because you know I, I remember coming up too, and and a lot of the older guys that have like I was thinking about this the other day. How many people have like passed away that are gone that were big influences? You know, um, down this way there was uh you know Bob Nixon was uh, he and he played up there quite a bit as well, and uh, Frank Minear who had played lead trumpet with the Stan Kenton Orchestra, he played a lot of big band work down here. But those guys are gone, and I was thinking about it. You know, used to being the young guy on the bandstand, and now. A lot of times, it's like we're the older guys on the bandstand, oh, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not the oldest yet, but right. we're getting up there, yep, you know. Yep. So it's just a weird, a weird uh, headspace to it be is, in, you know. Yeah. But those memories, you know, I remember all these conversations with these guys like it was yesterday. It doesn't seem like it was that long yep. ago, you know. I remember just like Hadley, like it was two weeks ago, right? You know, and all those yep. things, stories he had. So yeah, that's true. Anyways, well, so after after high school, um, mm-hmm. what what happened after high school? You just started playing, and that's yeah, been it. You know, I was uh, all my friends were talking about, oh, let's go to new uh, to the new school. I remember new school was like everybody just I don't know what what it was about new school, you know, but maybe it was just New York, so like that was good. So everybody was like, let's go to new school, and but I had got called. I don't even know how. My whole career has been playing, well, a lot of it was playing jazz, I feel like. But 
I got a call from um, uh, Jennifer Johns, who's a vocalist or singer out of L.A. She calls me, me and Ryan Leva, guitarist from Roseville High School. And she's like, hey, I got this tour, you know, I'm doing all my original music. It's a little reggae, a little pop, a little um, soul. So I was like. Man, you know, I was living with my grandmother at the time. I'm like, Grandma, I'm about to go on tour, you know. She's like, well, uh, you know, because I was like, should I go to college or, you know. And I was asking, you know, some of the professors at Cornish, you know, should I come here, you know. They're like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, like, they wasn't like, it wasn't discouraging or nothing, but it was just like, you know, if you got an opportunity, you playing, that's what you – just go, you know, so. Just College is not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, College will always be there. You know, yeah. Basically. So, I just, you know, I just, right away I went on tour and just been, to, I was touring um, a few times. So, I, after that, I just started playing, you know. Yeah. Well, you toured with a lot of folks. I yeah. mean, um, uh, I I didn't get the the other part in the bio, but I know you said some, some stuff with Diane, sure. Yeah, we and, did. Yeah, and a lot of like local stuff too with touring bands that come through. You do a lot of side yeah. band stuff, so yeah. there's tons and tons and tons of people that you've worked with and gotten the opportunity to play with. Yeah, you know? I, yeah. I don't, even, you know, I, and it's just I don't even really remember or know how a lot of stuff got connected, but you know, I'm just I'm grateful I was able to play with. You know, there are a lot of people, and it, it 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 was it was kind of. At first, I was like, "Oh man, you know, I'm playing with, you know, this this seasoned player. You know, they're a little older, you know." But I started appreciating it because they they like a particular thing. You know, they like you do you do you play the way I want I want to hear it. You know, like as long as the, you know you know. I've, too flashy right now, you know, so at first I was like, man, we'll play with like Branford or something, he called me a little bit, not really, but, you know, <laughs> but, you know, it was cool, I started appreciating it, you know, and like, okay, yeah, because they know what they want, they done did it all before, played with the great, so, yeah, it was, it was awesome to be able to play with, um, like, Marion McPartland, um, uh, Bucky Pizzarelli, and those guys are monsters, you know, you start listening, I'm like, oh, man, yeah, you know, it's like, so that, just, and then their stories and, and all that, that make me, made me want to, like, learn more about the history, even dig deeper, you know, it's like, man. But even along with that, I mean, you, you're one of those drummers that I, I think of, my opinion, it's like you can play anything you want. You know all these different styles well. And not only that, you're going to play it in a musical way for what's right for the group. You're not going to, like, force force like something that just because you can do it, you're going to make a, make music out of it and have it make sense. Um, and part of that, I think, is what makes you such a good band leader. Because you, you, when did you start leading bands? Because you've got Industrial Revelation. Yeah. You've got uh, no Limited. Longer, well, yeah. yeah. Right. But for, for a l really long it, run, right, that was a very right. successful band yeah. with um, you and Evan and Josh yeah. Rawlings and uh, uh -huh. Aham. Yeah. yeah. All, all of you guys are great writers and band leaders, yeah. to, you know, to be fair. Um, but then also Limited Edition, you yeah. know. And uh, and you were a long time working with McTuff and a big yeah, part of that yeah. band and that sound, Dorian. you know. So when when did you start putting together your own projects? My um, well, I I remember in middle in uh, high school when I first got to high school at Roosevelt. Um, I don't remember how, but I started playing with Brian Kinsella and Andrew Pokerbeck bass, you know. Cause we were in vocal jazz together, and and uh, I, I was just like, man, we should. Uh, I go to Brian one day. I'm like, man, we should try to play somewhere, you know, get some gigs or some a little cafe. Cause I remember Starbucks would have music, so we went down to Starbucks. Like, hey, we we go to Roseville right up the street. Can we play here? They were like, oh sure, you know. They probably thought we were just like some. I don't know, but it would be packed every week, you know, like, oh, because all the, vocal, the the kids would come, you know, so, so that was like a first group, you know, was, we called ourselves a triplication, <laughs> and uh, 
Brian, he was a monster. But uh, I think he's a engineer now or so. I, last I heard, uh, he was living in Olympia. You know, he's down there hanging. Olympia, doing something, teaching something, something heavy. Yeah, he was always a smart dude. <laughs> and um, and then I I was living with my grandmother. I moved out of my mom's house after a little bit after high school, like a year after high school, and started living with my grandmother. And then she would tell me stories a little bit of her and my grandfather, you know, and she'd be like, oh, I used to go to all his shows, and I used to dance, and, you know, he 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 loved having his own band. She was like, you know, you should start your own band, you know, and I was like, oh, I never thought, you know, because I just loved playing, getting called, you know, and like, she was like, yeah, if you got, if you the band leader, you could kind of make some of the decisions, you know, so I was like, all right, yeah. And then around that time, I already knew Evan and Naham. I met Josh while I was playing with Hadley because he was at Cornish. And um, so, yeah, I just, I, I remember I liked in, those guys individually. So I'm like, hey. And I knew Aham because we were kind of, he's a year or two older than me. He was at Mount Lake Terrace. And I was like, man, who? Who could I get every all the other uh trumpet players that I I would have gravitated towards? They went back to New York, like OR, Nick Roseboro, Carter Yasutaki. Aham was like one of the few black trumpet players in town still. I was like, man, hey Aham, man, you know, I wanna get something going. So and he knew Hadley's and then I played with Evan and uh Port Townsend. Um uh, he was playing with Aaron Parks. And I, I went in a, a jam session, and I remember we just locked in, like, you know, I don't, that was our first time playing, and then uh, we just kind of put it together, you know, had a first rehearsal at Cornish, and then we just started saying, hey, who knows who, let's get some gigs, you know, I'm gonna call it uh, Gilbert at that earshot, let's, you know, it was anything, whatever. <laughs> you know, we yeah. just started making making moves, <laughs> and um, yeah, that was good times. And those guys, they, you know, I didn't write or nothing, but I was like, man, you guys just bring in some music, you know, and I'll just put a spin on it, you know. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it was that was that 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 was industrial, and then um. Because I had kind of a, I, w- I kind of wanted to um, have a different sound also. We were doing kind of more of our original, original music. And Limited Edition came about because I wanted, I, w- I loved playing um, with Farkle. Farkle Del Sumo was on bass. And he had the electric bass, you know. So I was like, man, let me, I want to like a more poppy or funky sound, you know, we can get back to some of that, and then, um, Jock on, on Vibes, I seen him playing one time, I was like, oh, man, this guy's a boss, you know, man, and then, and then Cliff, all those guys are old like me, like, Cliff and I grew up here in Tacoma, we had the same teacher, but we were into, like, different, like, he was Branford and, uh, Michael Brecker, and I was, like, Joshua Redmond, Sunny State, you know, but, and then, uh, when I was at Cornish, like, Jacques and I were there at the same time, Farco came while we were there, he started studying at Cornish, so, so. well, no, Farco, I don't know how old Farco is, Uh but he went to school at Cornish the same time that, uh, Jacques and I were there, so, uh, you, you like the older players still. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah, but I was just like, man, let's get something together. I don't know what. They all kind of had it. Everybody always got their own different sound, but I'm just like, I like them as an individual. Let's see if we can come together, you know. And that's just, that's, I just, and I like, I like uh, everybody. You know, I can't be a band leader where it's like, we're going to play my tunes. And here's how it is, and that's it. You know, I'm like, man, I'm going to barely have no tunes. You guys bring them in. You know, I'm going to play what you guys have. But then well, it what, helped what, me. Yeah, you know? we're playing some of your music today, right, and they're great yeah. tunes. Really right. cool music, you know. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Yeah. Um, but they, though, I'm saying those guys helped me to just see 
to to help me write more tunes, you know, like. But even on that, like even when you say like putting your own spin on things, like the last album that I did was with you and Delvon Lamar, uh, and you know I had some arrangements of things, and and we've maybe played them before, but on the recording, like I didn't say anything, and some of the things that you and Delvon did was like rearranging and composing stuff on the spot that just like made it sound way cooler than if it, we just played it as it was, you know. So I mean, but you're that's because always... we messed up, and then, so, <laughs> and you were like, "Oh yeah, it's cool." It's like, <laughs> well, I did. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> no, but you know, no. yeah, it's, you know, that's why I love music too, because it's just like, man, you know, and then talking to people like who do, you know, these, these greats, you know, jazz greats, you know, you're like, man, it sounds so perfect. You guys work this out, you know, like. But you, you get a chance to talk to them, you learn stuff about the album. They say, no, nah, yeah, he, he came in early, so we switched it up. And it's like, oh, okay, you know, it's the same thing. <laughs> That's what I love. <laughs> well, so um, everybody's not really gigging a whole lot right now, but are you still, like, working on writing stuff, writing material, coming up with ideas, yeah, more projects for the yeah, band? Yeah, you know, um, limited edition, we have a whole record we got to mix and master so i'm excited about that you know it's just because it's it's some the music's cool you know everybody brought something in and it's something to say you know so um i want to try to get working on that you know putting that out and on that band it's it's you cliff cologne Jacques willis Farco Dosimov, um, Andy Coe, Andy Co. and Eric Gruindy. Okay, yeah. yeah, all monster players. Yeah, I yeah. was just like, man, yeah, we need some, we need some more, uh, some more horns, you know, all that, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we, I want to get um that mixed, and then you know, for like when it first started, I was kind of like. Getting some i I'm lately I've been starting to come up with some ideas, you know. It was a little slump at first, you know. It's like, oh man, you can't play, you know. You're practicing, but then you're like, what am I practicing for? I don't even, you know. But, but it's you know after doing some stuff, it's kind of up. It's been up and down, peaks and valleys for me. But you know, it's always in my head, you know. And then I, I got my son Donovan, so he's always like about music so it's like he's making me go hard you know it's like well i know uh, most musicians that are probably friends with you on facebook know of your son donovan yeah, because yeah. he's he's seven years old now and he's already like when he was two he was yeah, playing on the drum right, set yeah. so i mean i'm sure he's probably not aware of it now maybe he is but how fortunate he is to have you in the house and you guys play all the time because when he comes with you to gigs he gets on the set and plays and yeah. he's a tremendous drummer already at yeah, seven I, and and for me i you know i I kind of wanted him to just do his thing, you know. I don't really, you know, a little bit, you know. I'm like, oh, he's a paradiddle, double paradiddle, you know. But for the most part, I just let him go. Try to look when we're in the car, we're listening to some music. He's like, who's this? I'm just trying to let him hear different styles. Also, you know, when he was real little, it'd be like, what's he? What's the drummer playing with? He's like, brushes. I'm like, yep, that's right. <laughs> so he started. Pick it up a little sounds and so that was kinda cool. And um yeah, just just going up going from there, you know. Well normally um, I'm not wearing a watch today, so I have no idea what time it is and I'm oh, hoping I'm not going too short or too long. Do you happen to know yeah, what time it is? Got, uh, 447. 447. Okay. This is about the time usually I open things up for questions, and um, I don't have um, I'm here by myself today and I don't have any way to see questions. So if you have questions for Devon or myself Go ahead and text them in, and uh, maybe after the broadcast is done, we can get to them and answer them, and, and we'll do our best to answer any questions you have. Um, in the All meantime, right. um, what I ask you is, for musicians coming up, if you had advice, or actually, let me let me step back a minute. Um, you, you've been around all these great musicians <clears throat> and all these had op all these opportunities to play. Is there anything in particular, like for me, like if I can I can remember certain things that I've like learned from Julian Priester or from Hadley or from from my first teacher tracing it up that like that really helped me and like light bulbs went off. Did you have any any bits of information that you think were very helpful for you to be formative for you becoming a musician or who you are today? You know, um, I mean, for me. 
maybe the most the most I could I could say is the the advice I probably got from like Hadley and 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 um even maybe Hadley and, and Scott Brown, you know, at Roseville High School. Just just play. You know, it's it's hard. A lot of people say that. So I'm trying to think of a way how I understood just play. It's not you just play it. You know, you're not just being wild, you know, but it was more it's it was more of um I felt have that um play with that love, that emotion that if whoever's like Hadley, he used to always say, I just love your playing or I love that you just play because you're listening. You know, you're 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 hearing what I'm doing. And so it was more of an emotion behind it. So it's hard to really kind of, um, for me, be like, break it down. But, you know, I try to, that, that for me, I was just like, okay, that's it. You just play, you know, you like, you just, uh, play your, your feeling, you know, you're, it's, it's like a mixture of your feeling with theirs to make some beautiful, you know. And along with that, I'm assuming, uh, I, I think I already know the answer to this before I ask you, but I'm assuming you do a lot of listening to music and you've done a lot of listening to music. Is it fair to assume that you've done a lot of playing along with albums and playing along with stuff or more just yeah. listening and emulating? I did, I did play along to stuff. Yeah, I played along to, um, like when in my mom's basement, you know, I don't know how I, I think, oh, I would rush back home so I'd get my practice in because she was still at work. My young brother and sister, they were in, they were younger. I don't know where they were, but I would just play. I'll put on my headphones or the radio and put in a tape. So I played to some uh, stuff on the radio, played to jazz, and yeah, just everything, you know. And um, that did help, but a lot of it I did. I did just listen to to music and then try to just kind of it always was in my head so once I got to a rehearsal or a gig I'm gonna try to do that you know yeah but but um a lot of it was um it was kind of half and half you know yeah but more so now it's just I'll listen to I'll listen to it and like at least just catch how the whether the beat rides or how the how they're doing the the the, the feel of the song, you know. So, and then just try to put my own little spin on it, you know. So that yeah, when I listen, I will try to I try to hear mainly the main the whole spectrum of the song, you know, instead of trying to emulate it like that. Just try to feel the vibe. You know, try to catch what it's saying or what's the feel of it and then go your way with that, you know. And then, oh, man, so many people. Man, I remember, I don't know, I can't remember none of this stuff, but Jeff Johnson, he he always had some jewels dropped. I'd be like, oh, man, what'd you say again? You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he used to be like, it's like a snake in the grass, you know, you just... <laughs> Made me find something. I was like, oh, yep. <laughs> you know? <laughs> was, yeah. Well, so any advice for young musicians coming up if they're deciding uh, maybe I want to be a musician or maybe not? Any any helpful bits of advice to them that you would say? Words of wisdom from Devon Lewis in 2020? Man, I would just say, yeah, I would. Man, I say just keep playing. You know, you got to. It's you. There's so much out there. You can get discouraged. You can get you know so many awesome musicians, and you feel oh they're better than me, and I can't. I'll never be able to do that or this or play with that person. But you know, it's like you just keep going. You there's tons of people. It's like man, I I want to do what you do. You know how you do that. You know you got to realize that like. Like, you got a sound, you know, don't, 
if you if you're a musician you have a sound you know you might not be able to execute it all the way yet but just keep going it's gonna you know it's gonna be there you know and it's there already you just got to keep playing you got to keep doing it that's the only thing I, I i say work hard and try to um try to you know reach out too you know like like uh teach yourself kind of in a way like uh go go and search out those like youtube clips you know and and just and and practice mentally you know you you still practicing even you listening you know you don't know you practice you're like oh i'm not able to practice but you're listening that's practicing too you taking it in you know it's like a baby baby's not talking they're learning words and saying it to you know so you you gotta just keep listening taking in all the information you can that's what i feel i did you know i mean i'm still i still feel like i'm a garage you know i, I didn't take no lessons or nothing playing with you you know it's like oh man Play, playing with everybody yeah. but at, so if, if people are out there and let's say like they want to get together with you for a lesson or online lesson or hire you for a gig or recording or whatever how can they get in touch with you and reach you and are you open to taking on students or that kind yeah, of stuff yeah so how can people get in touch with you to to do that kind of stuff yeah right now it's a little tough you know with covid but um yeah they could you know call me text me email facebook uh, is there a website or no something? Web, but um yeah, just um, I got just my Devon Lewis on on Facebook, and then uh, Devon Lewis at Gmail dot com, and uh, hey, I get, I give my number out. You, know, <laughs> somebody, you, you know, gotta be careful yeah, about that right, these days. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm try to I try to make myself available because I feel like people made themselves available if I ask them, you know, so. I think that's kind of interesting that you say that because a lot of musicians, um, not all of them, but many will say, oh, I don't teach. Right. But if they can tell that there's someone that knows how to play and that's like respectful and they'll, they're open to like giving information right. or maybe yep. doing a lesson. So yep. that's, I guess, uh, a piece of information for people that are, that are wondering, oh, that person said no to that person. Well, if they can tell that there's a serious musician that really wants to study with them, I eventually yep. they'll come around. Exactly. You know? Yep. So, yeah, persistence, you know, yeah. Yeah, but, um, yeah, really, you know, I just like to, you know, just try to, um, and when I say teach, you know, for me, as a self-taught drummer, you know, I'm like, I want, I want to hear almost what I felt from you when I heard Elvin, you know, or, you know, that emotion, even Tony, Tony had that emotion too, you know, to me, he had all the chops too, but. You know, it's just like, I want to, you got to play in a way that you can feel it, you know. Don't just do all your licks and stuff, you know. That's cool, but there's some heart behind it, too. You know, that's what I want to, I feel like that's, that's kind of another level. Kind of the point. Yeah, exactly. The point, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right on. Well, we're getting close to time here. Um, so for everybody watching, like I said, my apologies about not having the uh, the question, being able to do that right now. But like I said, if you want to put questions in the comments, we'll do our best to get to those um, after the fact. Uh, Devon, it's been a pleasure having yeah, you here. Um, having we're going to be doing a concert with Devon here in about an hour. We're going to do a quick sound check and um, run through some of the tunes. We've got um, some music that Devon's written. I've got some new tunes, and uh, we haven't rehearsed it. We're going to just figure it out really quick here and do it, so uh, uh, stick around. Uh, we're doing that starting at 6 o'clock. And, uh, yeah, Devon, thanks for joining us. Thank you. And looking forward to playing some music. We'll see you guys in a little bit. Thank you.